Welcome everyone to the August 20th Select Board meeting. This meeting is being called to order at 637. This is an unusual meeting. This is a meeting that we do now. It's an annual meeting. Um, this is the meeting at which we review and discuss the draft of the town manager's performance evaluation. Um, that's the only thing we're going to be doing tonight, plus one agenda item for a, for a license or two, one or two licenses, however many we have. Um, but, but the only thing we're going to be really discussing in detail tonight is the town manager evaluation. Um, so I want to warn folks at home that this makes for very, very, very not interesting television. Um, because what we're going to start with doing is reviewing documents. We're going to have something like 40 pages of documents to read. Uh, it makes for a really very exciting meeting to watch, but then we'll discuss them. Um, the reason this is the only thing on our agenda tonight is this, because this is really the most important thing that the select board does. Not only does this provide critical feedback to the town manager, um, and gives him direction and, and guidance, uh, it also helps the public to know how well our individual and collective priorities for the management of the town, uh, how well they're aligned with the community. So, uh, so this really is a, a critical task for us. Um, so first let me step back to what got us here. Um, in sort of the larger picture, we have over the course of the summer been conducting uh, the performance evaluation in different steps. Um, we've talked about the, the various documents. We got all of our ducks in a row. We solicited public and staff comment throughout the month of July. Uh, and then once we had all of the public and staff comment in, we all worked individually on our own evaluation forms. Last week, everyone got those into me. Um, so I am the only person who has read everyone's evaluation forms. Uh, I should note, Mr. Hayden was not able to get his in last week, and he has provided his today. So that is uh, on the desk in front of you. I'll be giving you the whole rest of the packets in a moment. So what I've spent the last several days doing, as uh, has been our practice the last couple of years, is I have been trying to capture the spirit and the details of everyone's individual evaluation forms and put those into a composite draft. Uh, it is a composite because the select board has no individual authority, as we all know. We only have authority when we speak with one voice, which is to say at least a majority of us are saying something. Um, it, and so our individual forms don't have any individual authority or, or, or guidance really for the town manager. It's only the, the composite document where we are speaking with, with a single voice. So I have tried very hard, as I said, to capture all of the details where we have spoken um, similarly. Uh, as our evaluation form is complicated, as we all know, it's got about 27 questions on it. We all interpret those questions a little bit differently. We all put different, uh, different categories of, of items into the different answers of different questions. Um, but I try and synthesize all of that and put that together into a draft memo and a composite of our evaluation form. I try to take no liberties whatsoever. I'm not I'm not making any assumptions about anything. Um, so I have not included something unless it has direct reference in three or more of the evaluation forms. So it's really important what we're going to be doing now is making sure that there are not other things that we might all agree on or three or more of us might agree on that we want included in the memo uh, because individuals of us thought about it. Uh, it, it occurred to us but, um, but it didn't occur to the others of us as we were filling out the form. But as we discuss it, we would say, yes, we want it, that included. Because the goal here is to make the evaluation as complete as possible, both for the areas that we think are great strengths and for the areas that might benefit from more attention. So, um, I want to thank, first of all, all of the public and the staff who offered comment to us on this. Um, the Select Board's individual evaluations are really made up of a collection of our 
uh, personal observations over the course of a year as well as the informal feedback all of us receive constantly um, and the formal feedback period that I talked about with the public and the staff comment. So we had a um, pretty good response to both of those and, and I just want to uh, express my, our appreciation for that because it really does help to inform us. Um, also, I want to thank the select board for doing an incredibly thoughtful and careful job with these. I know that, uh, like me, you probably hate this. This is this is really it's complicated. It's you want to be very honest. You want to be very clear. You want to be very helpful. Um, and the public nature of an evaluation is is very awkward. And uh, so I also want to thank Mr. Musanti for being an incredibly good sport about this, um, because it is difficult. Uh, but at the same time, he recognizes and appreciates that this is all about uh, our helping to uh, further improve his his great leadership of the town. So uh, let me summarize that this is again an incredibly positive evaluation. No surprise there. Uh, Overall, this is an excellent review with a great appreciation for Mr. Musanti's work, once again. Uh, we have identified some areas that would benefit from more attention in the coming years to help further your management and leadership skills, and, uh, and we look forward to kind of talking about those with you. So without further ado, I think, I am going to pass out all of the documents. I will note, um, uh, this is important explanation for folks at home. The reason that you haven't seen these yet is because the new open meeting law as revised in 2010, a year when I was paying particular attention to the open meeting law as it relates to the town manager evaluation, uh, they, they made a change that does not allow for documents that express an opinion that are created by the board members themselves to be distributed ahead of time. So. There's always gray area, interpretive area there about what uh, constitutes an opinion or not. But basically, anything that would be um, that would be substantively influencing the others in our body isn't supposed to happen outside of meetings. So, since there's nothing more important that we do than the town manager evaluation, this is this is as of yet the best way we can find to do this. So, um, oh, and the other thing I wanted to note about that is Deborah Roussel in the office, bless her heart, uh, to accommodate this as well as um, the people who are watching at home, put these up on the website and just published them at home, from home at 630. So they have not been available to anybody before that, but now they are available to everybody on the website. So, um, so anybody who's interested as we sit here and read these for really the next 30, 40 minutes, however long it takes before our discussion starts, they are welcome to read along at home. Um, so I'm going to pass these out now. Um, and remember that this is the draft memo, which comprises really the guts of the evaluation, is a rough draft that is ours to add to, subtract from, and revise tonight. Um, because the goal here is to make sure that the, that, that memo includes everything that we want to include, make notes as you go along. I would suggest that you start with the draft memo and then you read all of the individual forms. As you go through the forms, if you note anything that you say, wow, that's a, that's a great concept. I wish I had included that. I wish that had ended up in the draft memo. Make a note of it or you know, mark it in some way. You're gonna have a whole bunch of pages in front of you. It will be difficult to just sort of find later if you don't mark it. Don't ask me how I know this. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so so go through, think about the things that perhaps didn't get included and should get included. And remember, I really was trying not to make any assumptions. So, so make sure that the things you want included are in fact in the memo. Um, and at the end, we will talk about all those things that, that still need to be uh, included because I have had a lot more time to sort of synthesize these than you have. Um, I have a couple of areas that I'm going to recommend that we talk about that, that um, aren't included that I think we should talk more about and I look forward to all the ones that you will have. So I'll stop talking now. I will hand these out and um, oh, and so Mr. Hayden's uh, you have on your desk right now. Mr. Hayden's, because I didn't receive it until today, it is not included 
in either the numerical or sort of the spiritual uh, <laughs> draft of this memo so far. Um, I have read it just quickly. Uh, it doesn't deviate significantly from many things. It will not be difficult to incorporate those answers into the memo. So where the memo says, you know, it involves four of the five select board members' responses, I can change all that to five and I can redo the numerical uh, percentages on the composite form. Okay. So I've got one second, I confused myself. Does everybody have does anybody have anything that says me on the front? You don't want anything that says me on the front? So I've given out four packets or five packets? Everybody has their, the packets with everybody. Do yours have the front page yeah, with a memo yeah. on it? Okay. This, is the, this is the tabulation. Yeah. All right, so if anybody's missing a piece, let me know. Then I have two for the press. And I think that's everything. So now read at your leisure. Um, no hurry. Like I said, this will be 30 or 40 minutes probably. And, uh, and then we will talk about it. Thank you very much.
just checking in. How are we doing? Two minutes, you got it. Your time. <laughs> oh, it's important, so we have to all feel like we've had enough time to do this, so I don't want to rush anybody at all. Do you, would you like a few more minutes? Okay. Um, years ago when they made the John Grisham book, The Firm, into a movie, I always remember the movie review talked about furious photocopying, <laughs> and <laughs> that's what this meeting feels like, <laughs> furious memo reading. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, so something I should have noted at the beginning is that um, I did preview all of this stuff with Mr. Musanti on Friday, so he and I have talked about it. He's read through everything, um, so there there are no surprises here to anything we're talking about now. Um, first of all, I hope that you think that the draft memo captures the spirit of of what we did here. You know, I want to keep. Um, I want to keep fine-tuning the specifics, but uh, but make sure that that we're starting in a in a good place. So I see nodding. So that's good. 
Okay. Um, so I will, so that you guys can keep thinking about it, um, but also, as I said, because I've gotten to think a lot more about this than you have, um, I'll start off with a couple of areas that, that I wanted us to clarify a bit. Um, and one of them is the issue about voting and advocacy at town meeting. This is something we had some comments on. We had comments on them last year also. Last year we came out very strongly in support of Mr. Musanti voting and speaking, advocating for his positions at town meeting um, because we thought that was important. This year that was noted on a couple of forms but it wasn't noted on a majority of them. So again, I want to clarify, it, all of them noted his right his undisputed right to vote and to speak at town meeting, but um, that's not the same as whether we're encouraging him to do it or not, and I would think that it would be helpful to him to have we as his supervising body come out strongly in, as far as what our position is on that. So again, we did come out strongly for that last time, so uh, I'd like some comments from folks about that. Ms. Brewer, um, please speak into your mic. I made it quite clear in my comments on my form that you know if people don't like it we should change the Amherst Town Government Act because that is how it is um, and I'm fully in support and I liked that you included that statement here I think if anything um, what might need some clarification is not whether or not we support his right under the Town Government Act to do so um, and not whether or not we support his right to advocate for his positions I think some some other things kind of muddied the water that caused people to then call the whole thing into question and based on the comments that we got both throughout the past year and and also um, in the value from individuals and one is associated with the amount of time that he speaks which I think is simply a clarification that needs to be done with the TMCC as we said when we asked you to forward us um, our position um, our questions and comments about you know sort of the town meeting debrief to the TMCC because I think that's something that basically just the whole community needs to be clear on I think there's been confusion and we discussed it at the time at the select board meeting that there's been confusion as to you know what's a, an employee answering a question and therefore is that subject to three minutes or is he asked now in his case is he answering a question and advocating and so then does that stray into the three minutes or like does he get unlimited time to answer the factual question and then get to do so I mean I think that's where you know some people started feeling like he's taking all the time he wants it's like nah he's just answering the oh, okay I can see where you could say okay he's answering the question and he's adding a little editorial to it so I think that it's just a matter of all having the same shared expectation. And I think that there are people who not only, one, don't like the Town Government Act that says he can advocate for his position, but two, expect that any time any human being speaks on the floor of town meeting, it will only be for three minutes. Well, that hasn't always been true for any employees that we've ever done that to. I mean, through the time I've been in town meeting, and even for things like the select board. I mean, the select board will say, hey, wait, Mr. Moderator, we could clarify that. And he doesn't say, okay, now you have three minutes. He just lets us clarify it. So I think that it's just brought out that bigger question, and I really hope that we would not focus it as being, you know, a problem of his as being, it just was indicative of a larger problem that we had associated with that, and maybe Mr. Walsh, somebody can clarify that better later. Okay, so if, if I can yeah. summarize. Um, so your, your comments come out very strongly, as do mine, in favor of him advocating for a position at town meeting that he, that he both can but more uh, should. Right. So you're saying there's this other issue about timing, Time and limits. so that's a, that's a really a separate issue that shouldn't be muddied into whether or not he's allowed to speak because he spoke in a way that was too long. To right. Speak. So so we're not going to come out with a position, I don't think, on whether or not he should be subject to the same time limits <laughs> no. as everybody else. Um, but so I appreciate your your making that point. Um, but. Uh, so, so, so far we've got, you're saying that he should, that we want him to be able to speak. It's important to, to understand what he thinks and what he's pushing for. Um, and then there's the timing issue that's separate. And I guess my point is to my colleagues and to, and to the public that if the timing issue is an issue, which I think it is, then that needs to be dealt with separately of our statement associated okay. with here. And then the other the other thing that's also sort of adjunct to that whole issue was the, the uh, mention in both one of our comments and in some feedback we got from the public about the zoning threshold of two-thirds of majority, which I know, you know, everything is what you're used to, but two-thirds in Massachusetts has been something that 
people, many people in Massachusetts with very good intent have been trying to turn over for many, many, many years. And so the idea that if we changed from two-thirds to majority, that would make us foolish or inappropriate or anything like that, I find very offensive when most of the country, as I understand it, does not have a two-thirds threshold. And secondly, many good-hearted people in Massachusetts have tried to change that as well. So although the comment you know, can be placed in some context associated with you know, anybody can say anything at town meeting, and I've certainly said way more uncomfortable things than that at town meeting, um, I think it, I, I would caution the public who's concerned about that statement and, and even my fellow colleagues that, I mean, it is a matter of opinion. It is a relative situation in that, as I said, there's been work for years for people to try and improve zoning regulations in Massachusetts in the context of is there a way to protect public rights and not have it be a two-thirds threshold rather than just, ah, let's just get rid of it so that a majority works. And of course, we don't want to be like most other people that have just majority rules. Okay. But I don't want, again, that to muddy up whether or not he's allowed to talk to me. Okay. Um, all right, other thoughts in general and specific about this, Mr. Hayden and then Mr. Walker. Yeah, I want to uh, uh, lend my voice to the chorus of support to having a, a town manager speak. Um, and I'm, I'm going to um, maybe pull away from the word advocacy. Clearly, that's often involved and appropriately. But the reason I think it's important is that uh, is for the same reason that I think it's important that the Finance Committee get to speak in advocacy of their budget. And it's important for the library trustees to speak in advocacy of their, whatever their position is, and, and often it's a budget, um, uh, or, or the planning board, or you know, go right down the list of people who, who get up in town meeting and speak um, uh, in advocacy for something. Um, we rely, I rely on John to um, uh, stay abreast at a much greater detail and maybe even with greater knowledge on a whole host of things. And that's what I want town meeting to have access to. Not necessarily my opinion, but sort of, uh, sort of an intelligent the, the, the intelligence, the, the, the fullness that, that the town manager can and often does uh, bring to a discussion. Mr. Weld. Order of decreasing triviality. Uh, with, with, <laughs> with, <laughs> with regard to the timing issue, I just wanted to point out also for the benefit of the viewing audience that unless I'm very mistaken, we don't have a timer we can see easily there. So, for example, we're sitting at our desks and the timer is behind us and the town moderator is keeping track of the time or the audience, the other town meeting members will see the lights and the clock, but we don't. So if people want us to stick to a strict time limit, somebody has to enforce it or they have to give us a means to, to see what time it actually is. So it's very easy to go over time and the moderator tends to err on the side of, of the judgment call, sometimes allowing people to stray if they're finishing up a comment. That's just by way of context. And as far as a two-thirds thing, only because it became an issue here. I did not hear the town manager saying we should change Massachusetts law. I heard the town manager saying that by most standards, a two-thirds vote minus one would be a very strong endorsement, but we have this higher threshold. And it's been noted subsequently that there are other thresholds in other communities, but I didn't see him complaining about the procedure in town meeting. I, thought him trying to, I, thought, I saw him trying to assess the support for a given measure. And then finally, to the most important, I thought I came out in favor of the advocacy, and if not, I'll do it here. Uh, you know, my point was, aside from the fact that the town manager is entitled to vote, uh, it would be peculiar for him to pretend he has no position since these things are developed by consensus. We talked so much about the partnership with the town manager, how he informs us. I mean, we're the chief executive, so we oversee, oversee the town in the political sense, but he's the chief executive administrator, or like a chief financial officer, plus an executive rolled into one, along with Mr. Pooler. So they're the ones who are implementing policy. and policies that they have to discuss with us and that they have to put into practice. So it seems sensible that they would be able to advocate for those policies. I would in fact like to know if he could not support a policy that we're trying to support by a vote of 51% or 66.7%. So obviously there are some sensitivities involved and so it's important that everyone understand why these things are being done and it's not manipulative or aggressive or whatever, but I think the principle of the vote is very clear. And the vote and the voice, I should say. Thank you very much. Ms. Stein, would you like to comment on that? 
Um, I did state in my um, evaluation that I thought it was John's right to advocate and to um, and to vote, um, but that perhaps um, keeping his remarks a little tighter might be a good thing, uh, since timing seemed to annoy. So um, to clarify, do, do you want to go so far as to say you encourage that, or just that you support that it's his right? Either way, I mean, I'm I'm happy. I I don't have strong feelings about it. I certainly think it's within his right, and that's good enough for me. I think he's following um, what he feels is his rights, and that's fine. Okay. All right. So I think we're. Uh, we're at least very strongly um, majority in favor of uh, of not just supporting but encouraging. Like, like we don't want you to stop voting or or advocating. Um, and so Ms. Stein is saying she doesn't feel quite as strongly as that, but it's all it's it's yeah. full support for sure and uh, and very strong encouragement. Okay. Um, I certainly don't feel he should stop doing it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, I think we're all on the same page there. Okay, um, I, I don't want to get sidetracked then, so we'll, I can reference the timing issue as a problem. The zoning issue, I personally agree 100% with Mr. Wild's interpretation of what happened there and, and that it was misunderstood by some, um, so I don't think he was advocating. I don't want to be speaking here, but I also don't want to get sidetracked in that word zoning issue. You want to comment? You let him speak as a town meeting. <laughs> First, on the, on the detail of that particular point, the point I was trying to express, uh, perhaps not as effective as effectively as I could have, was that uh, there was very strong support within town meeting for uh, the zoning measures. I, that was not meant to say that I was suggesting that the rules be changed. Um, I also appreciate the feedback again from the from the community but and also the select board about the uh, participation in town meeting ultimately after lots of deliberation really two years ago now coming into this position and then throughout I just think fundamentally it's it's important for the community in town meeting to know my my thoughts on a particular policy matter before them um, while trying to be fully cognizant of my role as town manager that one of my many duties is to help facilitate a smooth functioning town meeting and the whole run up to town meeting, the preparation, the preparation of the warrant, the formal and informal coaching that inevitably goes on with uh, uh, citizens submitting uh, petition articles, et cetera, about pro appropriate procedures. So I'm trying very much to stay conscious of that and not have me taking a position on a given issue cloud that we're trying to you know perform that support role for town meeting in a, in a professional and inclusive way thank you very much okay next issue i wanted a little clarification on is which is question 13 and goal number nine um this is the one about the staffing plan and the way that i had summarized our comments and ratings were that uh, perhaps we were not ourselves sufficiently clear on what our expectations were for that. Uh, I was a little bit surprised by our collective comments on rankings, uh, comments and rankings about that because I thought that we had been clear. I thought that we had particularly in discussing uh, performance goals for next year when we were having this discussion talking about that we were expecting really something that, that ends up being a written document, something that is not just sort of comments in a budget that you need to kind of infer, but that's a written plan. Um, so I'm not sure if our comments were various degrees of trying to be diplomatic and not say, you haven't given us that staffing plan yet, or if we do indeed need further clarification on this. So the question is, is this a fulfilled goal or an unfulfilled goal, or is this a goal that we keep needing to talk about for the future? So a couple of us put it as an unfulfilled goal, and a couple of us put it as, you know, anybody who had something that was other than 
needs improvement or unable to judge um, if, if you'd like to weigh in on what your thoughts were about the that particular question which again that was question 13 goal number nine mr. Hayden I, um, I I'm one of the unable to judges the um, am I the only one maybe no there were two of us um, the um, and, and, and the reason I say that is because I can't think of a place to go where I could say, oh, here is what the, the request is or the suggested requirement is for this department or that division or that, that function or, or whatever. I mean, I have a very, I have a sense, good or bad, I do have a sense of what the goals are. But I couldn't put my finger on the one thing. And um, I'm... Um, uh, I'm at the unable to judge phase because when we were introduced to Deborah, Deborah, ah, it's going to be difficult. Um, that was one of the uh, the tasks that uh, was mentioned as being set to her. So um, I'm waiting for that for her 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 uh, interaction with uh, with uh, Mr. Mizanti and figuring that out how, what, what that's going to be. Okay, so I would say unable to judge or needs improvement. Anything that suggests that the goal was unfulfilled is, uh, it, to me, makes sense with what I thought our expectation was. Um, so anybody who, who put satisfactory or commendable or anything like that, if you wanted to <coughs> speak about w what you thought. Mr. Wall. Mr. Gruber, I think, was first. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Gruber. No, go ahead. Uh, put that uh, clarification <laughs> Yeah, it was a judgment call, so probably I would have put down unable to judge. I guess my reasoning was that there were a number of important changes in staffing, new human resources director, new person in planning department, lots of things going on. Mr. Mazzanti coming back from medical leave. Under the circumstances, I assumed that the work was going on, but we hadn't yet seen it, so that was sort of a judgment call. But I, it was my understanding we would get a formal plan at some point. Okay. So I guess I was rating presumed progress, but the okay, plan or, was not or under good. the circumstances that it was right. not un reasonable that it wasn't fulfilled right. but that it wasn't fulfilled. because I imagine it's much easier to discuss planning when you've got your personnel in place <laughs> at the tops of those departments or at the key right. second tier levels oh, thank you Ms. Brewer. what I wanted to say that I just thought was ever so valuable is that I actually thought um, what you had said given then what I read of everybody's thing made total sense like we're all over the place on this mm -hmm. and so we need to work on this a little more. And, and reflecting back to, and, and Ms. Steins did a perfect thing at that. She marked it XX. <laughs> so um, I think that what you said earlier, though, was that, well, since we, we had this conversation um, about the FY13 goals, I think actually between the time of the end of FY12 and the discussion we had about the FY13 goals, I think we're clearer on what we expect FY13 to look like. But that couldn't be reflected here because it wasn't FY12. So in FY12, it was still kind of all over the place. I think that we should probably revisit it um, before we get too far along in FY13. But I think we now all better understand, having had that conversation associated with goals um, and having looked at this and see where we all end up, what we all think that means. And we can obviously like, have a separate conversation maybe as a very short agenda item at some point. What was it you meant about that again? Our notes indicate that so that we will be able to effectively look at that next year. But I think that for FY12, although it was very clear to some of us what we thought it was, it wasn't very clear to all of us. Okay. And so um, this is reflecting those moments in time. Okay. So, so we're pretty good with the fact that how it's, how it's presented. It, it's not you captured. We, we, haven't, we haven't fully worked it out. So, okay. So I, I, did you have any other comment? About no, that? I think Alyssa explained my point of view. I thought <laughs> uh, the hires had been great, and the fact is we haven't seen a plan with cost estimates, et cetera. Okay. Okay. All right. So I, I think I might be able to tweak that just a tad more, um, but, but that we've got the, the concept and the spirit of that. Okay. Um, next one. Uh, Question 25, which is goal number three. Uh, part of that was about gathering info on the strengths and weaknesses of service delivery. Um, this is one that has been on there for a couple of years, and last year we specifically noted it as one of the areas that, that needed some improvement. That, again, we were kind of looking for, like, some list, some something concrete, not just, you know, just 
we always want to hear about how service delivery is, what, but, but actual steps that were taken to, um, to try and collect feedback from the public about service delivery. So we had noted that last year. Only uh, one or two of us noted that this year. So again, I'm wondering if we felt like, like we needed to clarify what our expectations are there or that we are, that it's difficult to answer these questions and kind of get at every nuance of it. So, um, so my question to you is, is this, does this need additional wording? Is this something that has or has not been fulfilled in a way that needs to be reflected in the evaluation? Because at this point, it is essentially not there. Last year, it was noted for improvement. Mr. Wald. I guess, I mean, maybe it's the gather information that's particularly vague because you could just ask people to tell, you know, how are we doing? Or you could do, you could implement more formal mechanism, technological or others. So maybe we should be more clear about what what sort of data we're looking for and what means of solicitation and delivery. Okay. So Mr. Wald is saying more clarity for next year. So yeah, sort we of get leave it unrated at this point and yeah, look for more because clarity. Because we get questions year. about things like the work on the street or is a parking, what's different between parking violation and a parking fine, you know, things that are, uh, people may have different expectations of the level of information they should have or the timeliness of information. So I mean, the th first thing I think we can do is to clarify what we think we should be doing in giving information to the public and making the public aware of the means that we have for putting things out and getting feedback back uh, from them. But I think in particular, the feedback is, we could make clear what we want there. Okay, others, Mr. Hayden. Yeah, and, and maybe part of that, that clarity, I mean, a lot of reports you know, cross our desk and they're, and they're often uh, not somehow or other cohesive with this one goal. We saw the, the paving report, okay, that went off. And several months earlier, we had a, a little report on the number of potholes, the number of, uh, of, of yards of asphalt that had been used in potholes that month or the two months beforehand. I, I can't remember the exact date. And, and sometime before that, there was a street light survey. You know, so all of these, these little bits and pieces, um, I can't help but to notice that this month's um, edition of the uh, um, Pioneer Institute's Guide to Successful uh, Municipal Governments uh, includes a whole chapter on how that data is collected and, and you know what pieces of that are valuable to, to clump together. So that that's that is a that is a tough one, and there is a lot that goes on. And I so I'm looking forward to the, the resolving the challenge of, of making that um, accessible. Um, I might just as a as an aside um, mention that. Um, if, if there had been, if there is a system that exists to sort of collect all that stuff easily and, and create a, uh, an easy point of access to it, um, we might have had fewer phone calls going on during the snowstorm. Um, I mean, if somebody could access, oh yeah, we know, we know where the crews are, we know, you know where the, the, the utility companies are headed, we, you know, we have a sense of that. Um, so, I mean, that, that turns out, you know, on my reflection, to be kind of a significant um, goal, uh, important, but also big. Okay, thank you. Ms. Steiner, Ms. Brewer. I was gonna see if Diana wanted to talk for a change, because <laughs> no, you know I will. Let's sit down. The reason I marked that satisfactory is because I've been um, looking at it as Yep, things are going along. There's information about town successes and challenges out there. There's support, there's seeking of support. The gathering of information issue is not done yet in some formalized way, but it's not done in a bad formalized way, which I'm happy about. Um, <laughs> it's not based on some <clears throat> suggestion box, which is really not the way to go. It's not based on some expensive, let's hire somebody to do a survey of something that's useless. Um, it's. I think it's the more that I'm saying satisfactory, and someday it would be commendable if somebody came up with an interesting initiative as to how we might more effectively do that. And I'm also totally open to including things under that goal in terms of, um, like when the town manager does a self-evaluation of saying, so when it came to the storm response, 
one of the things we did is we started talking with the senior center and council on aging about how seniors how they dealt with it and so now moving forward we have this new thing we're doing and so it could be very isolated you know associated with individual things but to me it's kind of one of those almost permanent goals rather than a year-to-year -year goal that is like what's another way we can look at this and although there was nothing hugely exciting in that area to me this year and so i just marked it satisfactory um you know i guess the way to get from satisfactory to commendable in my mind is to come up with some more specific ways of doing it at specific times and then mentioning those to us so i can remember to include them in the evaluation but it's not really a problem it's just a it's an opportunity place that we could continue to come up with good ways of doing it because we've all seen it done kind of poorly and that's okay to not bother with suggestion boxes that are just kind of like okay I had a box and you can put something in it that's not really the kind of thing we're looking for we're okay. looking at trying to improve individual services so it's cool Ms. Knight? I'm thinking of the sheet we got on the new parking system where we had specific complaints about how this part of it worked and that part of it worked and what was being done um, somehow the complaints about the parking system must have gotten through um, and were being addressed point for point which I thought was really good um, so I don't know somehow the public's input on that must have been useful um, and it was nice to see that service in particular addressed so hopefully um, you can gather more public opinion in some meaningful way for other services in town okay um, mr. I want to revise and extend my remark um, the reason I'm the other commendable is that um, uh, I, you know I have a sense that the information is been made available I want to uh, recall um, the very extensive um, uh, descriptions of the successes and failures and shortcomings that accompanied every uh, budget item in the report. The reason that report is 160 pages long is because there is, is, is a half a page, a page, two lines um, on how, how effective that budget had been the year before at fulfilling the needs for you know whatever it was that that budget item whether it was well I'm not going to go into any more detail than that um, that that document is, is extraordinary and has a ton of information um, and um, if you have a penchant for numbers you can sort of drill down not very far and realize oh yeah look at this this spending was adequate this spending was not adequate this spending is behind the spending ahead um, so I mean it's all out there but it is maybe just a little bit diffuse and and maybe that's the discussion that we need to be having how to make it less more uh, more easily accessed okay so uh, so my goal here you can see this is why <laughs> the, I'm not taking any liberties and <laughs> trying to uh, assume anybody means anything my uh, intent is to make sure that we do not uh, unnecessarily ding him on something that we don't even know what we're talking about <laughs> and that we don't fail to give him credit for something that we are all on the same page about so I put this one firmly into the category of leave it as it is and uh, work on further clarity to the degree that we need to for next year but it doesn't require any further um, uh, clarification I don't think in the review Okay, and my last one, and so, um, so we talked about the ex October storm uh, as part of this discussion a couple ways. Um, some of us called out the October storm as a really important example of excellent crisis management, and so I'll say I was among them. Um, not all of us did, and because that was really such an extraordinary occurrence, um, if we mean to mark it that way, I want to make sure it gets included. So. What are folks' thoughts about including the October storm and various references as an example of excellent crisis management? 
Ms. Burr. Well, speaking as someone who totally neglected to put it in her entire review, um, I would be thrilled if you would include that. And when um, I was <clears throat> not taking an extra two minutes to reread the draft evaluation memo <laughs> after re reading the other materials, it doesn't seem to appear in here. And I didn't know if that was because you were concerned that it wasn't on enough of the forms. And I wasn't sure of necessarily which section to throw it into, but obviously you can base that on whatever you want to, but including like whichever section, if it shows up under community and intergovernmental relations, whatever. Obviously, it wasn't a goal because we didn't know we were going to have a crisis. But um, <laughs> I, I absolutely agree with all the comments that everybody made in terms of how well that went. And um, I mean, I made some offhand remark to the separate issue of when the town manager had to be away, and he had obviously set things up that things could go very well. Um, and that probably on a separate note should be as, as acknowledged here as well. But most importantly, I really think the crisis management thing, I'm just, I just totally didn't st see the obvious place to p tuck it in, and so I forgot, frankly. Right, so that's, that's why, why it's really good when we work on right. like this together, because the, that's, I want it in there. The form really inspires uh, different reactions from everybody <laughs> yeah. in different places and, and, and different <laughs> memories that you might have. And so some ways of dealing with the October storm talked about kind of the need for more communication or whatever. So sometimes it was mentioned in forms, but it wasn't specifically called out as, you know, uh, excellent crisis management. So again, I, just because it was mentioned, I, I, didn't, I couldn't, right. I didn't want to take the leap to, to the judgment about it. Uh, Mr. Walt. In the same vein, I mentioned it, I, I would hope in order to draw a balance, I think on, on overall we did very well. You know, we could have been hit a lot worse. Uh, I think the other thing is that we, and, and the town manager came in. I happened to be here one day myself in town hall, and he was in his office working for several hours despite the fact he would been on medical leave and so forth. I mean, so, and the rest of the team came and, and, and pulled together very nicely. What I was trying to say is that we did a very good job, I think. In some areas, we couldn't expect certain things, and some maybe we could have, but we, we adapted along the way, too. So we got better and better as the thing happened. And in retrospect, though, we saw the things we could have done differently whether it was social media or the use of the radio, things like that. So I was simply saying that there was feedback from the public asking for more or different response, and that we should heed that in, in the future. But we did well, I think. So. OK, thank you. Mr. Hain. Yeah, I'm going to be in the yes column as well. The, um, the other part of it, besides the, the management at the moment when the, in the, during the emergent condition, um, is the follow-up. You know, crisis management is a a forward-looking activity as well as um, a lights and siren response. Um, and I think that um, that's commendable. I mean, clearly we've got lots, we've spent a lot of thought, a lot of um, effort put into mitigating. And unfortunately, uh, it's always the last emergency that we're preparing for. Who knows what's coming? But if, if our ability to learn and think on our feet for this time is any indication, I think we're doing okay. Thank you. This time? I have it in my report. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> so. Right, so we're good. So we'll include it. Oh, okay, good. Yes. And uh, someone, maybe Ms. Brewer, just mentioned about um, the uh, how well things went in Mr. Musanti's absence, which is not currently included in is the Is he gone? Yeah, is he gone? yeah exactly. Um, okay, so that will be added also. Which almost sounds like, yeah, we didn't even notice he was gone. No. <laughs> 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 That's not what we were trying to say. <laughs> Yes, some cleverly worded mention of that would okay, be helpful. Okay, so that's the end of the things that I teased out and wanted to make sure we include. So now we will just go around the table and see what other folks want to include. So again, this is things that got mentioned uh, in individual reports that you think weren't either included or fully captured in the draft, or um, essentially to advocate for things that maybe you were the only person who, who wrote it, but you want to uh, you want to try and get us to agree to include it. So we can start anywhere. Ms. Dime, would you like to start? Um, sure. I am not going to sing a lot. I have a lot of specific little details in my report, but I don't think any of them um, need to be advocated for for inclusion in the overall summary because Mr. Musanti will see what I wrote. And um, I think he knows probably where I'm coming from on, on a couple of issues and that's good enough for me I, I think you have captured very well in this um, document the major areas and that satisfies me okay. thank you Ms. Brewer I have two things one is hopefully very easy and one is more complex the very easy one is in the draft evaluation memo if 
um, which I hate to bring up even like a comma or something in this thing because you worked so hard on all this. When we talk about the solar project in small letters, could we, for history's sake, um, since it's our first, but not certainly our last, um, refer to it as something more formal the first time we mention it, probably under um, right here. Um, but, you know, solar farm at closed landfill at such and such address, and then later solar farm, because we're going to have lots more going on. But this being our first huge project, I'd like that to be really clear in this evaluation so that five years from now, when people are looking back and our glorious solar history, they'll know exactly which project we were talking about. So hopefully that's an easy one. And the more complicated one is, and I was just so excited that you decided not to touch on this one. Question 20, goal number five. So that's the other assessment, not the building assessment, not the assessment that's not the budget detail, but the other thing. Shall conduct an assessment of the town's human resources needs and capabilities. Okay. So, to try and make a long story short, reading over everybody's answers, I don't think you answered the question the same way I did. And I disagree with you in this particular case, in that um, all the good stuff about new hires goes in other sections. The point is the assessment has not taken place. And if we think that doesn't matter, I guess we could write that down. Like, I always thought that was a stupid goal and we don't need it anyway. But to me, although of course we aren't there yet because we just got a new HR director, the assessment still needs to take place. We don't know of any idea how well we're recruiting, hiring, retaining, and supporting town staff in terms of our alignment with best practices. So I don't see how we could conceivably consider that to be commendable. I'm totally flummoxed by those answers. So I see the comments that support the great hires and great progress and the sensitivity issue, which I think was also important that I didn't bother to mention on mine for whatever reason. Um, I think those were all really good. I just think that the answers don't support the rating on 20, which is goal number five, which I marked as needs improvement. And I think either needs improvement or unable to judge are much more accurate answers than anything else for that goal because of the specificity of that goal. So. There's nothing. Anyone want to comment? I'll comment on, uh, so there's been a dramatic change in the human resources department and the, uh, the goals and vision for it. I wouldn't want to have that go unappreciated. And that seemed like a step towards, even though it wasn't the formal assessment itself, it was understanding what the select board's goal with the uh, intention with the goal was. So I was happy. It, in fact, it was funny because when we talked about the goals for next year, I said, we don't need this one anymore, right? Like, because human resources, and everybody said, no, no, we still need it because we still want the assessment. I said, okay. Um, but because there's been such a, an, uh, a change there, I wanted to make sure that that was acknowledged. So I had put it uh, in, because I think that we did all say, th those of us who put it as commendable, um, noted that it was a, a step indicating the, the progress that we were looking for already there. So that was how I felt about it. Other folks? First, we get to yeah. hear from other people. <laughs> Mr. Hayden. Well, the, 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 the reason that I'm the sole uh, unable to judge um, is that, it's for that very reason, there's been significant progress, which is noted in um, question number 17, recruiting and assigning best available personality, uh, person personalities, personnel um, in their competence. I mean, that's, that's I think we're, we're almost uh, unanimous um, in, well, we're unanimous in it being satisfactory or better. Um, the, um, and while that action, the action of getting, you know, Ms. Radway here and sort of the, 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 the reassignments that, that kind of filtered around that, um, you know, don't rise to the level of my being able to, to, to judge that the task is complete is because it isn't. It didn't, you know, 
that those are an important first step. I think we should all understand that and acknowledge it. But um, so, you know, I'm thinking unable to judge is maybe the most honest way. It's not unsatisfactory. It's not. It just isn't. Um, beyond, and, and I, I do think this is important to be said, beyond um, the observation that it is happening sort of at an informal level. Things are beginning to, um, you know, staffing is beginning to be it's much, I think, much better understood that where it's, what's needed, who's needed, what skill set, what uh, tools are needed in each spot is much, uh, recently is much uh, better understood than when I first joined the select board. Thank you. Mr. Wall. I think you adequately <coughs> expressed the reasons for my commendable rating there. Having heard Ms. Brewer, I can, in several cases I put down, it was a judgment call and I could go either way. And having heard Ms. Brewer's comments, I can see why I might have gone uh, more toward the middle than to the commendable. But I think all of us are trying to capture that positive change that had taken place there. I also think that's what's useful about the process. You know, when you have a kind of disjunction or contrast in responses, that's an opportunity. You know, as you said, the individual responses aren't the evaluation, it's the collective conversation. So to me, this has worked, the process has worked well. There were a bunch of commendables. There was Ms. Brewer's uh, needs improvement. We're having a conversation about it now, and the pros will capture things in a way this little simple checkoff grid can. So I'm satisfied with a description along the lines of the conversation we're having. Okay. Again, clarifying things for next year's goal in the process. Ms. Stein? Um, I did say that um, this is a good step forward, my exact words, the hire of the new unit of Ms. Radway. Um, I also mentioned the fact that um, Mr. Musanti is gathering um, data on staff salaries across a bigger universe so that people in town can see how they compare. And I think that this is a, a, another important um, step that will help with some of the complaints that we've had about um, salary compensation and other human resource issues so okay so I think that what I'm hearing is that basically we're all comfortable with the rating that we put mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but rather than calling it out as that rating I can talk about uh, as I did for another one saying how kind of the ratings were all over the place I could say the reasonings were all over the place um, but you know that the, there's agreement that this is this is not yet fulfilled but is still pending um, but that all we appreciate all the the positive signs in relation to the human resources development or whatever but I, I just won't um, I won't emphasize what the current rating is because the rating as we're saying is is not fully capturing what we what we want to express as the status of the fulfillment of that goal. Ms. Stein? I was thinking that you might want to say something like, um, we are at a great place. Um, we have really moved forward. And that next year, we will be able to have a more complete evaluation or whatever the phraseology was here assessment but we have moved significantly forward this year um, do you think that's kind of capturing what I said is kind of capturing what you're looking for for a change Oops. The, the reason I the reason I'm concerned about that and I really don't think we're talking about different things at all what we're talking about the difference between which you've just addressed and what you said is we, cannot, we could not, as things stood, have a goal that said HR assessment is 75% commendable because the HR assessment's not done. So you can't do a commendable on something that doesn't exist. If you don't feel like you know, all these other questions about personnel and recommendations, starting with questions 14 through 18, capture how much things have gotten better, then I appreciate that it needs to be reflected somewhere, but I don't think that was the right, the right way to reflect that goal. So I'm totally okay with the fact that if we just take that out, as you know, when we have the goal one, two, five, six, and eight, if you just take three out of the list and characterize the way you just did, because it's not that I'm arguing that anything's bad in HR, but any social imagination, it's Merle's times. 
It's that I just don't want us to say, like was said earlier, well, we don't need to do this anymore. Oh, well, yeah, we still need to do this in a big way because we still need to do the assessment, but it can't be done tomorrow. The person just started. <laughs> and we've got lots to do in terms of the big picture, but now we actually have a hope of doing it, whereas when we started this goal, it didn't seem possible. So okay. I'm very excited about the potential as well. Nothing in what I was trying to say is negative. I just, it was one of the places where our disagreement as to how we interpreted the question and where to make sure the right credit got placed for good accomplishments worked out. So I think if you want to just carry it in the text and just pull it out of that list, I think it sounds perfect. Okay. Mr. Hayden. I would, I would just, just point out that with the, with the new arithmetic, since there are now five of us who've weighed yes. in, this would fall into the other category anyway because it would be 60, 0, 20, 0, 20. Mm -hmm. Let's just um, leave it out of that but, line. <laughs> that's one thing. And, and also just, just sort of an underlying um, sense that I want to get. It's one of the things that, that I noticed about our form here, and so this is maybe looking ahead, is that some, some things we're, we're um, rating a thing, a report, a list, an assessment, whatever, and sometimes we are rating the the quality of of um, of the effort that has gone into that. And I found myself not able to differentiate between those, um, but maybe more of that in a little bit later. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we can and should and will continue to refine our goals as we deal with those. Um, I, and I said this when we talked about the forms uh, as we were reviewing and, and approving the forms to use this year, that actually because of how this works, I don't think that we should obsess too much on any particular question within the form because what it does is it makes for a very broad or what's the right analogy, a uh, very, uh, uh, it, it, it becomes a funnel that widely captures through the different questions, through the different interpretations, it, it captures and teases out lots of different things that we think about. So I'll tell you that from, from what I have to do with this, it makes it very difficult. I can't just look at, you know, number 14 and say, yep, Nobody, nobody said X, Y, or Z in number 14. Well, because some of us might have said it in 13 or 12 or 14, you know, yeah. so. Exactly, it, we said it different places. Exactly, yeah. but it is still all being captured by the form. So, so that's why it, the performance goals are a different matter. We should be extremely clear at, with what our intentions are for the, for the performance goals um, as we keep going forward with them. But, but in general on the form, whether, we, whether some of us captured one feeling in line 12 and another in, in 18, I, I don't think that matters as long as it was captured. Mr. Hayden. Which brings me to a, a general comment on the, um, the, the questionnaires that we received back. I just wanted um, to, to reiterate uh, my appreciation as well for the information that they got. And I want to be uh, doubly thankful for the comments when, when actual comments were written down sort of for the same reason that you can assimilate and figure out what the answer is when the comments are written down that helped me understand better everything else around it. Okay, Ms. Burr, were you done with things you wanted to have included or changed? Do you have any more? Yes. Right. Mr. Hayden, anything you wanted? I, I just wanted to, to um, give as an example um, my dilemma about you know, the effort versus the outcome. Um, under under um, uh, economic development, for instance, you know, I, 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 I it's, it's, it's one question and I put four check marks into it, two of one and two of the other, and um, I, I'm going to enjoy how the arithmetic on that works out. I see some, some odd percentages, so I think you've got a system pretty well established. But um, the thing that I understood as I contemplated that question is that, um, Part of the success of particularly this, this goal involves much broader market forces than uh, we can expect uh, Mr. Mazzanti, even in his godlike aura, to be able to control. <laughs> um, so um, I realized, oh, geez, you know, we don't have a, a, a new multi-million dollar uh, tax, uh, taxable asset in town. Is that his fault? even though clearly we've, we've tasked him with, with developing that. 
Um, I don't think so. So are you looking to have a change with anything that's in the No, about not, that? not this year. I think that I, what, I, what I'm trying to, 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 to lay the groundwork for is your understanding of why I marked it the way I did. So when you make your comments, you can have that to, to assimilate. Okay. Um, but also to prompt my colleagues as we have our discussion about the 2014 goals, um, we might have a little thinking about that as well. Okay. Um, and since you mentioned the, uh, the dividing up and the math that's involved, so um, some of us give one answer to every question and some of us give multiple answers to every question and, and some of them are multi-part questions. So that makes perfect sense. And, uh, and, and we're all, again, we're all going to approach this differently. So what I've done is when there were four sets of responses, then each of us were worth 25% in that. Um, and, and if somebody uh, divided up their answer, that was also divided up as well. So I think that was well captured in the, uh, in the composite, if you look at yes, the composite I, I know, I, form. I agree. So, um, so, it, so, you know, feel free to do that. It's a perfectly fine way to do it. We should all, we should all react to the form however we do, you know, and then it's just kind of, yeah. you know, my problem. I, I think it's clear. It, and and now that, that all of us have weighed in, a four-part answer now is five it points makes each. Yeah, it makes it so easy. <laughs> okay. The six uh, and a half percent stuff. All right. So anything else you wanted to change, make sure no. it got included or oh, nuanced in the memo? Uh, thank you. Okay. Mr. Walt? Uh, I think you, you captured everything very well, especially given the complexity of the form and our mm -hmm. re responses. The only slight question I had is about you know, evaluation process information because, again, there's, I mean, here there are five of us who spend our time doing this every two weeks or sometimes every week and we have conversations and we're discussing the results. In the case of other things, we have mostly prose letters from the public, under three dozen, and about the same number, even fewer from town staff, uh, you know, barely 10%. And so I think it's useful that you indicate here that low response level and the maybe difficulty of interpreting some of those responses because it's hard to know how to react. And Ms. Brewer, I think, made a very good comment in her uh, final remarks about maybe the need for better forms or better feedback mechanisms because clearly there are certain, there's a kind of a disjuncture between generally very strong staff satisfaction and a pocket of mm -hmm. less satisfied opinion, but it's very hard for us to assess at this distance. Indeed. Okay, so uh, so you're not looking for any particular change about that? I, that I it's just wasn't sure whether you're going to, if the evaluation process information is really going to become part of the report or is that background? Everything that you see there is the draft memo. So okay, so that is going to stay. Yeah, yeah, so you want that in there, you want it different or? No, I think it's useful to have it there. Okay, there. okay. It was just, you know, it said agreed upon during discussion, so I was going to make sure the numbers stayed in there. Okay, yep. All right. Um, so then I think that's everything, unless people have thought of new things. I started with you, right? I'm not leaving you <laughs> off. Okay. <laughs> so everybody has gotten to comment on things that they want to add to, subtract from, revise in the memo. Okay. I think that I can capture all of these things. Um, We're counting on you. <laughs> um, again, thank you very much for, for approaching this so thoughtfully and so carefully. And, and the reason this is so difficult for us to do is because we put so much effort into it. Uh, it is n an inexact science. Uh, in the memo, I say it's more than art than science, and it surely is. Um, it's very important. We're doing better with it all the time. and. Uh, and I, I feel very good about the, the final result that we get from it. Um, and again, for folks who are watching at home, um, what we were talking about, what we spent the majority of the night talking about was making sure we got things included or not included. You might get a misimpression that this was about, uh, about problems when in fact that the evaluation itself is overwhelmingly positive. Um, the select board, the community, and staff are all extremely supportive of Mr. Musanti, appreciative of his his tremendous work uh, on behalf of Amherst and uh, and it, this is a good opportunity to be able to tell you that and how much we value it so thank you very much um, before we finish this part of everything is there anything that you would like to comment on or ask questions about or clarify uh, no just uh, I'll say again how much I'm uh, enjoying the work and the challenges uh, that come with the job every day and I'm blessed to have such a talented staff at all levels and I very much appreciate the 
uh, individual feedback from staff and from board members as well as the collective feedback so I'm looking forward to next Monday Thank you very much. So next Monday, so I'm going to turn this into a formal memo. What's currently a draft will not be a draft anymore. Um, and, uh, and basically, you just trust me on it. If, you, if, if when I submit it next Monday to you all and we vote to formally approve it, if you're not ready to approve it because you think that I haven't captured it, then we'll just wait another uh, amount of time. But, uh, but it's not going to be dramatically different from what it says now, and it will just incorporate what we've talked about this time. Is there any chance that you could send it to us ahead of time so that we can come in prepared to say we think it's wonderful mm -hmm. or I would change line three and put a comma in there? I would Not that you would ever do that. I would. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, go easy on the editing because this takes me so much time and there's just, you'd have to pick your battles because at some point, I'm just going to go, oh, yeah. <laughs> so just, I'm just warning you. If I lose it on this, that's why. Um, but certainly, I think that because this is all reflecting a conversation that we've had in public, we're not now influencing each other outside of meetings. Um, I think I certainly can do that. So what I will do is hopefully I'll try and circulate a draft in advance of the packet deadline so that we can come up with uh, hopefully the final version for the packet deadline. I think that's perfectly legitimate. That would be great. Okay. Mr. Hayden. I just wanted to add uh, to your list of appreciations, appreciation for you keeping us, uh, steering us clear from the, the booby traps and the open meeting law. Um, something as, value, as important, it's frustrating as heck. I just want to point that out. I did not to be able to, to, to sort of think out loud with colleagues beforehand, but um, the, uh, because it's so important, you know, I, I appreciate that, you know, we're doing it right so that it will stick. Thank you. All right, anything else, Ms. Brewer? I know we're all tired and I just feel desperate to say this, so if you give me just a minute, it'd be <laughs> awesome. Um, I realize that we will have a separate conversation after we are finished with the August 27th saying, okay, moving forward, what are we gonna do differently um, next time around? Not only the FY13 goals, which is the ongoing <clears throat> conversation, but also the possibility of the blah, blah, blah that Alyssa put at the end of her thing associated with the staff questionnaires and how we could do better, which is something we talk about every year, which is why we tweaked them this year. So I know that's upcoming, so no, I'm not talking about this now what I'm talking about right now is um, just a couple more process questions while comments while it's still all fresh is that yes Ms. O'Keefe again needs credit for doing an amazing job seeing all these five different people five different people turning their stuff in um, is like amazing and the fact that we not only interpret I mean every question is like we all interpret it a different way and you're trying to figure out well did he say it in 11 or 13 or whatever and does it all mean the same thing we got people putting X's in two or three different places we got multiple questions within boxes I mean like everybody's this is the way you fill out a form interpretation is different and so for you to try and compile it into one, yeah, I like whatever you want to write is fine with me because I am no longer <laughs> willing to complain about any of that because it's crazy. The other thing um, is associated with that is that I want to make sure it's clear to people that with the unfortunately relatively low amount of public feedback we got both from the public, public, and the staff, um, is that one of the things we've made a point of doing in this process for the last several years, and I know is sometimes done differently other places, is that each member of this board gets to interpret that information again their own way. We all get the original documents associated with that and then we filter them through our own brains as to what we thought people meant. And so I have seen it done other places otherwise where they say, well, here you, know, here you, Bill, you look at all the staff input and you tell me what that says and then that gets incorporated into the larger thing. No, it's that we're all also interpreting that. So I want the public to recognize and the staff to recognize that we are all giving our own special filter to that before we get it to Ms. O'Keefe. But at this point, that seems like the thoroughly right way to do it as well. But it is, again, being looked at through several different sets of eyes, so maybe you like that. Um, and associated with open meeting law interpretation, having discussed these sorts of things at some length with some of the open meeting law people at the AGO's office, I think that the basic rule of if an opinion is expressed, you can't send something out ahead of time is ludicrous. I have told them that, and they understand that, except they don't know how where to draw a line between different kinds of reports that people might make, and so that's one of the ongoing problems with it. And so it comes out with this bold statement of no opinion it's like, pff, that makes no sense to all of us doing this work every day, but the reality is they don't know where to say not to. Given that, however, I feel that we are, I am like, 
I'm supremely proud and confident of our process here. I am confident that we are way heads above everyone else in terms of what gets released to the public, in terms of our individual information that's provided, our individual ratings. We don't just have someone sitting here trying to make notes while we're just blah, blah, blah to each other. We're actually filling out forms, taking responsibility for our own ratings. I think we should be very proud of that. It's been a long time coming to the point where we are right here. And it's not without thought and a lot of hard work, especially on your part, that we've gotten to this point. So we should feel really good about this. Thank you. I, I absolutely agree. There are, you know, I learn at MMA, I learn through consultation with other um, colleagues in, in towns around ours. Um, I, all kinds of ways people don't do, are unable to do, do badly, stumble over performance evaluations. And, uh, and that's because it's hard. It's very hard. <laughs> but uh, but I, as Ms. Brewer said, I think we're doing a truly excellent job with it. Again, I think we're so, we're so thoughtful and, and careful in it. And, uh, and I think that the transparency and accountability of the process is just critical. And, and I'm really proud of where we are with that. So thank you all very much. Okay, um, so then the other thing we need to do is we need to make a motion and then I want to do a quick calendar preview and then we can leave. Ms. Stein. I move that the select board approve a special wine and malt license for hurricane boosters for service at a golf outing slash dinner to be held on the grounds of the Hickory Ridge Golf Club Monday, August 27th, 2012 from 1230 p.m. to 8 p.m. Karen Dunn, manager. Okay. I don't know what her, it's just kind of tacked on there. Let's see if we can figure it out. Applicant. No, second. Applicant. Yeah, Applicant. Golf committee chair. I guess it yeah. All right, Mr. Hayden has seconded it. Further discussion, Mr. Hayden. Just a very quick um, appreciation for, um, be, this is this is boosting a high school organization, so it's possible there'll be high schoolers around. I really appreciate the uh, the controls that were described to us as far as making sure people who may are allowed to uh, access the alcohol will have access, and those who aren't will not. I'll also note uh, appreciation for Ms. Roussel. This was actually a complicated special liquor license application. Usually they're very easy, but um, because Hickory Ridge has an existing liquor license, but has since tr changed ownership. That license is no longer valid, and yet since it hasn't been rescinded and blah, blah, blah. So there was a whole big thing that uh, she had to go through with the state to make sure this could be done, and the way that it's being done is is fully legal and, and going along with all of the requirements. So uh, so this was not just a run-of-the-mill one that came in and we approve it. This, there's a lot of work behind this to make sure it was all accurate. So thanks to Ms. Roussel. Uh, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay, I just want to do a quick calendar preview for you before we go. Um, obviously, we have not met in a very long time. <laughs> so we have a whole bunch of things on our agenda for next week. Um, we have, uh, and those are listed on the calendar preview at the end, but I just want to call your attention to a couple of things. We have three different public hearings, two different poll hearings for Western Mass Electric, <laughs> as well as the public hearing on the parking policy changes. Um, the parking policy hearing is going to be at 7.30. Obviously, the public hearings all had to have their, their times uh, noticed early. So the Western Mass Electric ones are 6.45 and 6.50, and then the parking changes one is at 7 30. Um, also next week we will be talking about plans to fill the library trustee vacancy you all saw in the paper that there has been a vacancy there um, we have been notified by the library trustees about that i have been in coordination with mr Serrett, the uh, president of the library trustees about this process and how it would work what the timing would be um, he in consultation with his colleagues requested that we do this at the September 24th select board meeting um, so we will be discussing that next week but I wanted to get that kind of on your radar that that is what the uh, that is what the expectation is it's not official until we approve it but uh in, in case you had any issues or thoughts about it I wanted to just get you thinking about that now um, 
I think that is all I have to note about the calendar preview. There are a bunch of other things that, that don't rise to the level of being listed on here, all kinds of updates and whatever's that are going to happen there. But these are the things that, that the public would be most interested in and that um, you all needed to be aware of. I'm sorry, what did you say? I'm sorry. I, um, there will be three committee appointments. We need to fill a committee for complicated reasons for La Paz. Yeah, there will be, I'm sure there will be uh, a bunch of other things that don't quite make uh, being listed on, on this section of the agenda ahead of time. But a uh, plan for basically a busy, long meeting next time, and, uh, and then we won't meet again until after Labor Day. Mr. Hayden. How confident are we that the uh, Western Mass Electric will be ready for the Sunderland Road hearing? Um, I believe that all of their stuff is all set. It all went out. It, the mailings happened on Friday. So uh, they were already set with all of their arrangements. It was a question of whether they could get the uh, coordination through their home office and the Verizon office in order to get the uh, abutter notification sent out in time, and that, that did happen. Good. So, yeah. yeah, that looks good. Um, I'm particularly anxious for that one to succeed. Yes. Um, okay. Any questions about anything on the calendar preview? All right, then, Mr. Hayden. I would move to adjourn. Without objection, this meeting adjourns at 8.47. Thank you very much.